Hello, welcome to Ludic Science. In a previous video, I talked about these little charge and protection modules for lithium ion batteries, the TP4056. And these modules are very handy and simple to use. You power the module here with this micro USB connector or directly with 5 volts at the terminals market plus and minus and to the other side you connect your battery at the terminals b plus and b minus and the output for your load is at the end terminals out plus and out minus the module will handle the charge of the battery first with constant current and at the end of the charge with constant constant voltage and also will protect your battery for overcharge and also for over discharge well one uh, feature of this module is that the charge current is one amp and this is okay for the most common type of lithium ion battery the 18 650 size like this one one amp is okay for this battery However, there are smaller batteries that need less than one amp. Depending on the battery size, you may need 100 milliamps, 200 or 500. So it will be good if the module could handle different currents. And indeed, that is the case. If you look at the data sheet of the chip, you can see that there is a resistor that uh, manages the charge current. Changing the value of this resistor will change the output current. Now, this resistor is located here. It is marked R3. And what you need to do is to remove the resistor and connect another resistor according to the table to manage the charge that you need for your battery. However, it is even better to have a variable output current and what you need to do is to remove the resistor and install a potentiometer. That is what I'm going to do in this video. As you can see, I removed the resistor R3 and connected a pair of wires that go to the potentiometer. It is a 10K potentiometer because this is the value that gives the one amp current that is default for the module. I also soldered a resistor in series because when we move the potentiometer to the minimum to zero ohms, remember that from the table, the less resistance, the more current that the module will produce. At zero ohms, the module will try to output a very large current and the chip will burn. So we have this resistor, which is 680 ohms. For the case, when we move the potentiometer to the zero value, we still have some resistance and avoid burning the module. So I will now connect 
charger here and the multimeter to monitor the charging current. I will now connect the power to the module to start the charge. Okay, almost zero amps. And if we turn our potentiometer, we can increase the current to around one amp, which is the default current. And we can set the current that we want. Here, for example, is 0.09 amps or 90 milliamps. We can set to another value. 200 milliamps, for example, depending on the size of your battery. Normally, every battery comes with an indication of the charge current that it needs. So you can vary your current from around 100 milliamps to the full one amp that is normal for the module. So there you have it, a simple way to obtain variable current from these charge and protection circuits. Hope you liked the video, if that is the case, please visit my Patreon page. Thanks for coming to my channel and see you in the next video.